So today I want to talk about how everything has changed and the rapture is very, very soon. I'm also going to share some comments of the day, some news headlines, and, and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do, come on, every single day, I remind you I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor and I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord and I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable, grab yourself something to eat or drink, grab some coffee or tea. Ooh, have some sparkling water and an elephant's ear cookie. You might have to Google that one, but grab whatever you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. So I'm old. I'm an old guy. I'm not that old, but I'm old. 60, 60s old. You know, sorry to my friends who are 70 and up. <laughs> you guys say, Tom, you're not old. You're only 60. Well, I feel old, <laughs> but I've been looking at Bible prophecy for a long time, on and off for a long time, 40 years. And what strikes me now, what's so, like you guys who are younger, even in your 30s and 40s, you just don't realize the lack of signs we had back when I started looking at this. The first 20 years I looked at it, you know, we'd see some little sign and we'd be jumping up and down. Jesus is coming soon. And it was nothing. And now all these years later, we're looking at all the signs and they've all converged. They've all converged. They're all here. They've all converged. The next event in the prophetic schedule is the rapture of the church. That's the next event. Everything has changed in the past two or three years. But I say that because, you know, the, the pandemic happened and that was a huge turn. That was a huge turn. They tested something on us and it appeared to work. And that was a huge change. But man, the stuff we're seeing now with AI, with bricks, with just a, a with the CBDCs, with this meeting that's happening in September at the United Nations where they're discussing a seven-year co covenant with the sustainable goal development and there's 17 points in that plan. We just, we're living in the very last days. I am totally convinced of it. And I'm, I'm literally thinking, I don't know how much time we have before we're not as in the days of Noah, meaning when the rapture happens and people are just eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, just having their, having relatively normal life on earth. Cause that's what it was told. It was as in the days of Noah. And I'm really thinking more and more as I look at all these signs that have converged, how much longer can we be as in the days of Noah? Because I'm, I'm seeing video between weather and governments falling and riots around the world, I'm seeing some pretty crazy stuff. I'm seeing some pretty crazy stuff. I really think all the signs have converged and we're waiting for that rapture. We're waiting for the rapture and that's gonna cause chaos. People are gonna be looking for a solution and that, you know, that Antichrist is going to rise up and they're just going to fall at his feet. Not everyone, praise God, but most will just fall at his feet because he's going to come up with a solution. And that's, you know, you have to realize people say, well, it's not, it's not bad enough in the world for the rapture to happen. Well, as in the days of Noah, it's supposed to be kind of normal life. And I feel like after we've gotten out of the thing we just went through the last three years, people feel like it's kind of, they know something's going on in the world, but they are definitely eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. And I just don't know how long that can continue. But I know one thing, that rapture is going to cause complete and utter chaos. So when the people are saying like, the world's not bad enough, I just can't see them doing a one world government and a one world monetary system, cashless and the rapture, the rapture the chaos that that causes. Hey, I want to look at a scripture before I get into some news headlines and uh, something I read, which was really cool. First Corinthians 15, 55 through 57. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
listen to this thing I read online. A little girl was having a picnic with her daddy. Deathly allergic to bee stings, she became terrified as a bumblebee buzzed overhead. Seeing the bee, her father caught it and held it in his hand for a few seconds before letting it go. As it buzzed around once more, the little girl cried, Daddy, Daddy, why did you let the bee go? Rather than explain, the father chose to simply open his hand to show his daughter the stinger embedded in his palm. That's exactly what Jesus did for me when he absorbed the sting of my sin and my stupidity. Isn't that beautiful? What a story. First, I thought he was the meanest dad in the world. <laughs> you know, his daughter was allergic to bees and he's letting it go. But then when he opens his hand and you see the stinger in his hand, you realize, yeah, it's what Jesus did for us. It's incredible. We serve an incredible loving God. I can't emphasize that enough. Jesus is so loving and he went to a cross because he loves you. And if you were the only person who ever believed in him and the power of his blood and his death and resurrection, if you were the only person, he would have went there to the cross just for you. That's incredible. That's really incredible. Let's see what's going on in this crazy world. From the Jerusalem Post, Nasrallah, the head of um, Hezbollah. Middle East will not rest until cancerous Israel is removed. The entire Middle East will not rest until the cancerous gland that is Israel is removed, Hassan Nasrallah said on Saturday morning, according to Hezbollah-affiliated media in Lebanon. Uh, the leader of the Lebanese terror organization further warned that Palestinians today believe more than ever in the resistance and on the axis of resistance. He also reaffirmed that Hezbollah stands by the Palestinians with everything we possess. Speaking on National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gavir's Temple Mount visit on Tisha B'Av, Nasrallah stated that the enemy must hear a decisive stance from all Muslims as we watch a war approaching in that in that land, in the land of Israel. I got cars flying in front of me, just so you know, if you see weird uh, reflections on me. Um, also from Israel today, a group of Hezbollah activists today cut the border fence established in 2006 by UNIFIL and crossed into the narrow buffer zone established by Israel between it and Lebanon. So that, man... This whole thing is ramping up so quickly. And I've told you before, if I shut this video off and looked at the news and saw that Israel was in a pretty major war, it wouldn't surprise me any day at any time. That's how close we are, I believe, to war in Israel. And I always ask you guys to, to pray to pray for the people on all sides over there. Um, this is from All Israel News. The week ahead... Israelis are dangerously divided over judicial overhaul as their enemy Palestinian factions seek to reconcile with each other in Egypt. One of the most dramatic weeks in Israeli politics has concluded, and Israelis are wondering what comes next. Where does a deeply divided nation go from here? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told ABC News that he is more optimistic now than before about the chances of reaching a broad consensus on judicial reform. The atmosphere in the Jewish state is heavily charged. Military and intelligence officials are warning of a threat to national security, while financial experts strike similar tones about the economy. On the street, Israelis are floating ideas like separation and a two-state solution, not about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but rather in invoking the two ancient kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Meanwhile, Israel's regional enemies are observing the situation and they are taking notes. What a time to be alive to see all this stuff. Man, I'm telling you, there was 30 years ago, there was no signs. <laughs> we knew that Israel had became a nation in one day, May 14th, 1948. That was probably the most major prophetic sign. That really set it all in motion. But man, we see signs every day. We see more signs in one day today than we did in 20 years back then. 
Next, we got following the rising tensions, the Minister of Defense approved operational plans for the deterioration of the northern border. The IDF prepared for an escalation at the border, and the minister approved several courses of action in response to the removal of the Hezbollah tent on Israeli territory, including in the event of an open battle for every scenario. It's going to happen. It's going to happen soon. I don't know if we're going to get raptured right at the beginning of a war in Israel or as it goes on a little bit, but I really, really believe both those things, the rapture and war in Israel, is very close. This can't last too much longer. And it's just this is just one aspect of it, the Hezbollah-Lebanon thing. All the other warring factions are all meeting together and planning stuff. And then Iran, who's the, you know, they're all Iran's proxies, all those warring factions. But Iran has plans too. You know, I just, I just, we'll see what goes on. You know, all I, all I keep thinking is we're at the point now where instead of looking for a day or an hour of the rapture, and some people do that, and that's great. If you're into that, that's cool. I'm just saying, look up every single day because that's how close we are. That's how close we are. Look up every day. If you look at it a certain date and then it comes and goes and it depresses you, don't do that. Just look up every day because he's coming soon. Next, we got Russia says um, it's a, intensified the attacks on Ukraine. Please pray for our friends in Russia and Ukraine as they go through this terrible time. It's horrible. I can't stand reading about this stuff, but I think it's important to know what's going on in the world. Moscow has intensified strikes on Ukrainian military infrastructure in response to attacks on Russian-controlled territory, Defense Minister Sergei Shogu said on Monday. Against the background, background of the failure of the so-called counteroffensive, Kiev has focused on carrying out terrorist attacks on civilian infrastructure, he said. The intensity of our strikes against Ukrainian military facilities has been considerably increased. Rumors of wars. Everywhere we turn, rumors of wars. Wars and rumors of wars. More Wagner fighters move closer to Polish border, the Poland prime minister says. A group of 100 soldiers from the Russian Wagner Group have moved closer to the Belarusian city of Grodno near the Polish border, Polish Prime Minister said on Saturday. The situation is getting increasingly dangerous. Most likely, they, the Wagner personnel, will be disguised as the Belarusian border guard and help illegal migrants get to the Polish territory and destabilize Poland. What a time to be alive, huh? What a time to be alive to see all this stuff happening. Did you guys hear about this? This, man, this is major. Possible Chinese malware in United States systems, a ticking time bomb, says a report. The Biden administration believes China has implanted malware in key U.S. power and communication networks in a ticking time bomb that could disrupt the military in event of a conflict, the New York Times reported on Saturday. The Times, quoting U.S. military intelligence and security officials, said the malware potentially gave China People Liberation Army the ability to disrupt U.S. military operations if Beijing were to move against Taiwan at some point. The systems affected, the Times said, could allow China not only to cut off water, power, and communications to U.S. military bases, but also to homes and businesses across the United States. That's pretty serious. That's pretty serious. That would trouble me and worry me if I, if I didn't belong to Jesus. It would trouble me a lot. When you belong to Jesus, it's meh, you know. What are you going to do? The threats are coming in from all sides. The darkness in the world is just growing exponentially, and we're watching it every day grow. It's getting darker and darker. But God, right? We have Jesus. We have Jesus. He's not worried one bit. Not even one bit. He's excited to come get his bride because he knows he's coming to get his bride soon. This is from Blockworks. WorldCoin isn't as bad as it sounds. It's worse. <laughs> 
WorldCoin is no radical new financial system and certainly not one aimed at equality or fairness. WorldCoin is a new financial system connected to sensitive biometric information, mostly harvested from poor people. Sure sounds like a terrible idea. Terrible doesn't do it justice. WorldCoin will need to assemble a vast database of iris data, but not everyone is eager to gaze into an orb. In the bootstrapping phase, at least, you had to pay people to scan their eyes. And so WorldCoin turned to the global south, home to the cheapest eyeballs, and they played a dark game of what will people do for money? Well, every eight seconds, 24 hours a day, somebody is staring into that orb and giving their information to it. Um, no thanks, I'll just take water. But people line up for it. And you know what? I really think eventually they won't even have to pay people anything. People will just say, that's cool. Let me get in on that. It's incredible. The beast system forming before our very eyes. Did you hear about this? You know, when you're driving, I, I don't know if it's a, I think it's a United States company, but you see those yellow trucks, the freight trucks, it says yellow. Trucking giant Yellow shuts down the 99-year-old company, which has almost 30,000 staff and 12,000 big rigs, ceases operations immediately, despite a $700 million COVID bailout. It's one of the nation's oldest trucking companies, and it announced yesterday it's closing down with 30,000 jobs at risk. Pray for those people that are losing their jobs. But this is happening all over the world, I, this morning I'm watching videos and I'm seeing like incredible weather videos, just stuff happened in Beijing, China, this flooding happened in Beijing and I'm watching cars just going over this waterfall, you know, just incredible, incredible the stuff that's going on. But I'm also seeing, you know, in Niger, they overthrew the government there, and it's just chaos. The whole world is experiencing that. It's, there's so much rioting, protesting and rioting, and governments falling, and weather that's just off the charts. And all I look at it, I'm just like, you're coming soon, Jesus, aren't you? There's no doubt in my mind that the rapture is soon, a pre-tribulation rapture. No doubt in my mind that it's soon. Next, two supermoons to appear in August culminating in a rare blue moon. Supermoons take place when a full moon is near its closest point to the Earth, making it appear up to 14% bigger and 30% brighter compared with when it's furthest away. People will get to see the first moon on Tuesday evening, tomorrow, August 1st, as the full moon rises in the southeast a mere 229,159 miles from, from Earth. It will be even closer on the night of Wednesday, August 30th, at a distance of 222,000 miles and 43. So it'll be about 120 miles closer. And because of it, the second full moon in the same month, it is known as a blue moon. Don't they say once in a blue moon? So we've got, you know, there's so many. I just love how the Lord just fills the skies with so many signs, so many signs. Hey, listen to this dude, all right? This is from the Daily Mail. I am a UFO experiencer who is visited by creatures with red eyes and glowing orbs. My stories are so compelling that NASA and the CAA are studying me. A North Carolina man shared with DailyMail.com how he has been visited by glowing orbs in the sky for 16 years. The first sighting was in 2007 while he was in the woods around Cape Fear. You know, the, the times, this is humor right now, just a little disclaimer. The times that I've been visited by glowing orbs, they're usually in the shape of like a pepperoni and I had just too much pizza the night before. But this dude really, he thinks, you know, he's been visited by the, uh, the glowing orbs. 16 years could be too much pizza it really could be this is all demonic and this is all in preparation for the rapture how much how much are we hearing about glowing orbs 
and UAPs and UFOs and aliens. They're preparing the world for the rapture of the church. They don't know it. They're not, they're not sitting there saying, oh, let's talk about this stuff. So then when the rapture happens, they're not, it's not that. There's a demonic spirit that influences all of this. And it's all to get prepared for the rapture. This is clown world right here. Sorry. This, you know, I just had to read this. Nothing to do with Bible prophecy. This is just to do with clown world. C L O W triple A N. <laughs> clown world. <laughs> Japanese man who identifies as a dog takes his first public stroll after $16,000 transformation and he forms bonds with other canines. A Japanese man who goes by his dog alter ego, Toko, his name is now Toko the dog, he took his first public stroll since his $16,000 transformation into a rough collie. Now, basically, I thought, I had to look at the pictures because I'm like, come on, how do you transform into a dog? I think it's just a very expensive suit that he's in. But he sits in this suit all day and he gives his paw to people. And I, I could make a hundred jokes about this, but I'll just say one thing. I'm really glad my identity is in Christ Jesus. I, I'm really, that's the only identity I want is to be in him. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who is going to come and take us out of this crazy world. He has a perfect plan. Let's get some comments of the day, shall we? Katrina Davis, y'all. I am just excited for what lies ahead for all of us who believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You each are in my prayers. May we run the race marked out for each one of us as we are down here in these last days. See you all with Jesus soon in the clouds. We will see you there, Katrina, soon. And we do each have a race marked out for us. Beautiful. Thank you. Karen Mallett. Tom, waiting and watching the clouds each and every day for his return. The skies are showing signs, and it is the final days here on earth. My heart explodes with joy, knowing he is coming for us any day now. See you in the clouds, and thank you for your uplifting podcast each and every day. Maranatha. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It's soon. He is coming to get us soon. Dust Bunny. Thank you, Tom, for encouraging us. This was very much needed today as I've been seriously doubting my faith these past days. Every time I try to share the good news about Jesus, the message falls upon deaf ears. I know we are supposed to share the gospel, but all I get is hatred, feelings of loneliness, and demonic attacks. I, it feels pointless, but I want to trust God. I want to be with Jesus. Nothing in this world can hold me back any longer. I don't even care about getting married, having a family, or any earthly blessings anymore. Let's go home soon. You know, Dust Bunny, it, it, I know what you're saying. I know it feels frustrating and it feels like it's falling on deaf ears. But you know, when you plant seeds, you don't see the greenery popping up the second you plant the seeds. And sometimes that soil's rough. Sometimes you're like, nothing's going to grow here. This is so discouraging. And then all of a sudden, you show up a little later and things have grown. You know, you, you, you're you planting seeds. That's what we're supposed to do. I love Isaiah 55, verse 11. Listen to this. This is the words of God. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. His word does not come back void. When you plant those seeds, it may be frustrating. You may get mocked. I get mocked every day. You may get mocked. It's okay that you're planting seeds. And after the day of that rapture, not all, but many people are going to remember things that were said to them because there's going to be a huge revival of people turning to Jesus after the rapture. Want to go home. May all of our unsaved loved ones come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm praying that God gives peace to those who worry, strength to the fearful, and encouragement to those longing for our eternal home. God bless you all. That's beautiful, Wana. Thank you. Sandra Chandler. 
Praise Jesus Christ for cleansing me of all my sins and flaws. I am a believer and a child of God, my Father. I just can't praise Jesus Christ enough for what he has done for me and everyone else that will call on him. He will forgive everyone. Thank you, Tom, for sharing. Amen, Sandra. Thank you. Let's see. Deborah Shipley. Thanks, Tom, for your encouragement today. Even when I think I couldn't love Jesus anymore, I end up doing that exact thing. Oh, what a beautiful God we have. Can't, can't wait for eternity with my Savior. Isn't it going to be amazing? Thank you, Deborah. Geraldine. You see, this is the reason for the little wait. He is preparing others to be with him in eternity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let them that will come to you come. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Geraldine. You're right about that. Who, who is, who, how many more people wouldn't you love? Can you imagine? Oh, see, this will never happen. This is just a game. Can you imagine if we had a counter, a live counter of every person counting down to that last person who says, Jesus, forgive my sins. I believe in you. And then we get raptured. Because there is a last person somewhere. But can you imagine having a live counter? Like if right now it said, I don't know, you know, 38,727. And then we see 38,026, 25, 24. Imagine a counter. That would be exciting. That would tell us when the rapture was going to happen. You know, I'm hoping that counter's down to about 30. <laughs> 30 people left. But one day it's going to happen. It's going to happen soon. And the whole thing, the whole, everything, everything I have to say right now is geared toward the people that don't know Jesus. Because you're heading to something that's so tragically, tragically dangerous and depressing, the seven-year tribulation. You just have to understand that you don't have to live through those seven years. You could be with Jesus. You could be raptured. And it's such a simple thing. Jesus Christ came to this earth. He's God's only begotten son. He came to this earth. He was completely God, completely man. He put on human flesh. He walked the earth. He did miracles. He healed people. He washed feet. So humble. The same Jesus who spoke and nothing became everything. He created the universe with the power of his words. That same Jesus was washing feet. That same Jesus was being brutalized do you understand the power that Jesus possesses? Do you understand he didn't have to put up with any of it? He did it because he loves you. He was tortured and then he was put on a cross because he loves you. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell and he solved the sin problem because we're all sinners. Every one of us. We're all born with a sin nature. We all sin. But Jesus was like, I'm going to go down there and I'm. he's the lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. The plan was for him to come here to die. The disciples thought, oh man, he's going to be king now. We're going to be like rock stars with him. They just couldn't grasp that he was going to be tortured on a cross and die. He did, they didn't understand it till it happened. They kept waiting for him to be declared king and to start his kingdom. But Jesus died for you. He did it willingly. And he did it because he loves you. And, and all you have to do is believe in what he did and believe in the power of the blood. So you just have to be, Jesus, forgive my sins. I need these sins to be taken care of, Lord. Forgive them, forget them, bury them in the bottom of the deepest oceans so that not even you remember them. And Lord, I believe in the power of your blood that you shed on the cross. I believe that that blood can wash me white as snow and I believe that you died on the cross and your last words were it is finished I believe you were buried and you rose again on the third day and I believe you're coming back and when you believe that when you believe that you're born again God will put his Holy Spirit in you and it will change you and you will be rapture ready you will be a new creation in Christ Jesus you will be sealed into the day of redemption Jesus will never let you out of the palm of his hand. Do it today because I'm telling you, there's not many days. Your time frame to believe in what Jesus did for you is getting very, very short. 
you need to do it. That's what I got. I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to pray for everyone who bumps into this video. And if we're not raptured today, and I think today is a perfectly good day for the rapture, but if not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.